Welcome back everyone. Today's video is about buck converters. As some of you probably know, my latest project I'm looking at is a, a one wheel skateboard. It's a battery operated device and I need a five volt supply generated from the 36 volt battery pack and I originally was planning to use just a three terminal regulator however they're not up to the task that voltage is just a little bit high uh, for them to handle and also the efficiency is not great because there's so much voltage drop across the actual device so anyway I've decided to use a buck converter so I thought I'd do a tutorial on the actual buck converter itself so let's take a look at it now Well they're called switch mode power supplies because they use a switching technique so I've simplified the circuit here to the bare minimum so let's take a look at it and first of all let's take a look when the switch is in the closed position so when the switch is closed we'll have current flowing from the battery through the inductor and through the actual load resistor and returning back to the battery. Now as the current flows through the inductor it's going to form a magnetic field and also what we're going to see is this capacitor is going to charge up. Now the diode is reverse biased with positive at the top negative at the bottom so it has no effect in this circuit at all. Now let's have a look at when the switch opens. So the magnetic field in the inductor is going to collapse and generate a back EMF with positive on the right side. So what we'll find is the current from the inductor is going to flow through the resistor in the same direction. And now we're going to find that this diode with positive on the bottom and negative at the top is forward biased so the current will flow through the diode and back to the inductor. As the magnetic field collapses it will supply current to the resistor but not forever and as that current from the inductor reduces the capacitor will take over supplying the current to the load. So the idea is if we switch the switch on and off fast enough then we can actually control the voltage applied to the actual load resistor and we won't see the switching, all we'll see is a small amount of ripple on that waveform. Okay, so let's expand on that simple circuit a little. Uh, down the bottom here we've got that same simple circuit that we had before, but now we're going to take a sample of the output voltage on the load and bring it into a control circuit where we monitor what it is compared to what it should be and then control the switch accordingly to make sure we get the right voltage at the output. Okay so let's take it one step further again this time we'll look at an IC that can actually provide that control and switching. So if we have a look at this circuit we can see our inductor, our capacitor and our diode that we had in that nice simple circuit and the actual device is taking the place of the actual switch that we had in our simple circuit and here we can see we've got the feedback voltage uh, being applied to that IC and that's what's used to control the switching. Now if we have a look at the internal of that particular device if we look at VIN and follow that through it's coming through to a switching transistor and going through to the output so that's our switch element that we talked about. We've got an on off control here which just turns off the output, an internal voltage regulator. Now if we look at where the feedback comes through, it comes through a voltage divider and then it's fed to the error amplifier. Now there's also a really stable voltage reference which is fed to the error amplifier as well. So the output of that error amplifier is going to be a combination of the feedback voltage compared to the actual voltage reference. Now we've, next we've got an oscillator which will be a, some sort of a ramp type uh, generator 
And what we're trying to develop here is a pulse width modulated signal to control that switch. So we use a comparator and we compare the error signal with the actual ramp from that oscillator to generate a pulse width output. And that gets fed through a NOR gate and through an actual driver for that particular transistor. And of course it's got automatic current and thermal shutdown built into the circuit. So there we go, that's a bit of a look at buck converters and an actual practical implementation using an IC. And I'm hoping that that helps get to grips with buck converters. Okay, cheers for now. If you like what I'm doing, then please do like the video. If you'd like to see more, then please subscribe. And don't forget to hit the chime so you get notified when I post something new. And I'll put a couple of links here to some other videos you can look at.